Hello, everyone. Welcome to OPPO's Future Imaging Technology Event. I'm Simon, Director of Imaging at OPPO. Today, we are here to talk about some imaging-related technologies. Phones are usually the first choice for taking pictures for most people because it comes in very handy. It's small, it's light, unlike the digital cameras, and most of all, pretty much everyone always has one with them, some have two or three. It's the closest thing to capturing the good moments in life. Thus, it is a tech that we should continuously advance and invest. Now, in order to capture, we need to first let the camera see what to be captured. Now, brightness is the first thing that comes into the picture. We need to have enough light. Seeing something lets you know something is there, but not necessarily what is there. All right, so this brings in clarity. We need to have enough clarity to recognize what is there. Then comes in the color, which gives us the richness within a picture. Now, imaging technologies take a rather long life cycle to develop, especially those that are hardware related. They could go up to 18 months. So it's a rather long term effort. We have been investing heavily in imaging, starting from sensors to modules and to algorithms to give the users the desired imaging performance. The final result is always a combination of software and hardware efforts, a strong hardware to provide a good basis and a good software to deliver the optimized results. Today, I am excited to introduce four techs to you. OPPO's next generation RGBW sensor, our continuous optical zoom, the five access OIS for smartphones, and our new underscreen camera solution. Let's begin with the RGBW sensor. As stated earlier, in order to see, we need to have enough light. The more light we get, the more information we have to play with. There are a number of ways to increase the amount of information. You could adjust the aperture, but would impact the depth of field. Or you could also choose a larger sensor, which you would then have to bring in a tall lens and could cause a thicker phone factor. So we decided to take a different approach. We did a mod with the original RGB sensor and changed the pixel array. The pixel array of the sensor contains four colors, red, green, blue, and white. This will significantly increase the amount of light the sensor is to receive. Now, 50% of the original pixels have been replaced with white pixels, along with some positioning changes. Now, we introduced this technology to R7 Plus back in 2015 with, with the IMX278 sensor. It greatly improved the shooting and performance in relatively low light conditions. Now, at the same time, it also came in with some flaws. The more effect was bad. The color accuracy was also off. So we took this back to R&D. Now, as the photons went into the photo dials, it leaked to the nearby pixels and caused the crosstalks between the photo dials, which badly damaged the color performance. The new deep trench isolation now suppresses this crosstalk. You could see the blue barriers added between the photo dials. The more effect is also greatly suppressed with the OPPO's quadrop pixel binning algorithm. Using the new pixel array with OPPO's quadrop binning algorithm together gives us enough color information to get the correct results, thus removing the need to guess calculate. The situation where we sometimes have missing colors mostly doesn't happen anymore. It is also to be mentioned that this time, 
we put our algorithms inside the sensor. This should be the first time that a self-developed algorithm from a smartphone company has been embedded in a CMOS sensor. This greatly improves the cross-platform compatibility and imaging processing efficiency. Thanks to these innovations, 60% more light can be captured and 35% of noise of signal ratio is improved. Now let us look at some engineering sample pictures. These pictures are taken at 35 lux. While preserving the purity, we were able to get a brighter and more detailed pictures from the RGBW sensor. We will be commercializing this technology in the fourth quarter of 2021. Now let's move on to our next topic, our continuous optical zoom. Professional photographers with digital cameras have the option to mount lenses with different focal lengths, especially when it comes to distance shooting. Zoom lens that provide a range comes in handy. So we are trying to bring this convenience to smartphones. We did 10X hybrid optical zoom in Reno 10, and further on, we did the second generation on Find X2 Pro. Now, these cover the long ranges already. However, it leaves some space to be improved at the mid-range. Thus came in the multi-camera zoom solution, which adds a mid-range lens to the phone, trying to fill in the gap. The solution is already almost satisfying, yet there's always room to be improved. Introducing more cameras increase the possibility of the jumping that happens when switching between cameras. The aperture, the sensor size of the cameras on the phones are generally different in order to fulfill its purpose and fit the phone factor at the same time. Thus, when a switch happens, a sudden jump on the field of view, the color, the white balance is almost always observed. Adding another camera means introducing additional jumps on your way of zooming in and out. Also, there's still ranges that are not being covered in between the two tele lenses. So it would need to be filled in through cropping and digital zooming, which generally causes image quality drop. Thus, it seems that putting zoom lens in a phone would be a very good idea. Now, let us take a look at what we did. We could see now here the continuous optical zoom moving in action. First of all, we have replaced the conventional ball type motor solution with the long stroke position guiding shaft motor. This delivers a stable, precise, smooth, and most of all, a greater range of zoom. Then comes the prismatic OIS that provides imaging stabilization to help compensate the vibrations. And we have two ultra thin, high precision aspheric lens made of glass, of course, reducing light desperation and reducing the module size. Now, OPPO's new zoom technology is able to support a continuous optical zoom equivalent to an 85 to 200 millimeter focal lens. Throughout the entire optical zoom range, there is no need to switch between sensors. Now let's take a look at some engineering samples. Now this is on 3.8. If we look closely to the building, we could see that the blurry is slightly lesser on the continuous zoom. Then we have the 5.4. Okay, so the edges of the windows here are obviously a lot more clear. Then we have the 8.3. We have the tree leaves here. Obviously, a lot more detail is preserved. Now with this new continuous optical zoom powering the tele lens, you get the smoothest experience, similar to what on a professional camera does. And you could capture everything you want to capture at any distance without image quality drop. Now let's talk about 5-axis OIS. Image stabilization is a very important and basic key element when it comes to taking pictures in everyday life. When you take out your phone to shoot, you are most likely holding it with your hands. Now handshaking coming from the moving to trigger the shutter that would blur the picture. And additional blurs would come if you start chasing your dog, your kid, or anything for leg. Now, OPPO first introduced the optical imaging stabilization on R9S 
in 2016, trying to compensate these vibrations. This did some help before you started chasing, but still has a big gap to what digital cameras can do. Digital cameras generally support five axis stabilization that covers angular blur, transitional blur, and rolling blur. This provides powerful suppression of camera shake when tracing your dogs and kids. Now, conventional smartphone OIS could only compensate two axes. So given how powerful these professional systems are, again, we wanted to move this on a smartphone. We have brought to you a five axis OIS for smartphones. Now let's see how it's done. First, we have the lens shift. Then we have the sensor rolling. And finally, we have the sensor shift. And what we put them together, we got our five access OIS. The compensation precision has been raised to two mu's. We have a 65% increase on vibration compensation performance and a 70% improvement on getting usable pictures. The OPPO 5 access OIS has a compact size. It allows a larger sensor to be used when feeding in phone factors and it's power efficient. Now let's take a look at some engineering sample pictures. The shooter is actually running, chasing this skateboard guy. So it means the shooter and the shootee are both moving. Now from these pictures, we could see that the pictures are actually still pretty crisp. You don't see any ghosts or howling or anything. Then we have the videos. Again, the shooter is running here. He's chasing the skateboard guy. Okay, so we could see here that the shaking is very well suppressed. For those of you who are chasing, we will be commercializing this in the first quarter of 2022. Now let's move on to underscreen camera. A few days ago, you may have noticed that we unveiled our next generation underscreen camera technology. To achieve a good experience of both display and selfie, we redesigned the subpixel array of the camera area of the panel. Now the imaging algorithm also plays a crucial role in computing a well-lit portrait. OPPO's US Research Center has tailor-made a series of proprietary algorithms for the brand new underscreen camera solution. The algorithm includes diffraction compensation, dehaze, HDR, and auto white balance. Tens of thousands of images have been used for training to ensure comprehensive and consistent results. Now let's take a look at some engineering sample pictures. From the sample photos, we could see that the whole picture appears clear and more natural looking, while the face in the image also appears more vivid. With OPPO's next generation underscreen camera, we have combined the best hardware innovation and algorithms to perfectly conceal the camera underneath the screen, providing a true full screen experience. Good screen quality and camera image quality are both obtained. We believe this is the best underscreen camera solution so far. Another thing I would like to mention is that OPPO is the very first to submit USD standards to the International Electrotechnical Commission and receive approval, which include color shifts, display transmittance, diffraction, and reflectance, and a little more. To wrap up, we talked about Vortex. We have the RGBW sensor, the continuous loom that covers 85 to 200 millimeter focal lengths, a five axis OIS, and the underscreen camera. All these cutting edges technologies are made possible by OPPO engineers around the world. Currently, OPPO has imaging labs around the world, including Yokohama and Hyderabad and many other places. Imaging technology has always been a focal point of OPPO. Our aim is to provide each and every one with the tools they need to capture these beautiful moments anytime, anywhere. Now that brings me to the end of today's session. Thank you all for joining. We look forward to sharing more with you in the near future. Until then, thank you once again. Stay healthy and stay safe. Goodbye.